Hey guys! So we're going to do an introduction to the book Chinese Cinderella today. This is by Adeline Yen Ma. Um, it is a non-fiction book, so uh, if you can see the post or the subtitle here, it's The True Story of an Unwanted Daughter. And so by calling it Chinese Cinderella, she's going to spend time talking about how she felt like an unwanted daughter, much like Cinderella theoretically did, right? Um, so I have linked for you on the unit calendar the PDF version of the book and also the audio book so you can listen to it, you can watch the slides that I'm putting together, um, but you can also read the PDF. So however you feel like you understand it better, do that. You can do both. Um, so today I just want to give you an introduction to it so you kind of know what to expect. This is a memoir and a memoir is a piece of literature typically autobiographical that focuses on a specific aspect or part of someone's life. So a portion of it or an aspect of it in this case how she related to Cinderella or the idea of being an unwanted daughter. And this covers um, the time period from a about when she was 5 to 14. So I'm going to read her introduction here. It's to all unwanted children. She says, I have always cherished this dream of creating something unique and imperishable so that the past could not fade away forever. I know one day I shall die and vanish into the void, but hope to preserve my memories through my writing. Perhaps others who were also unwanted children may see them a hundred years from now and be encouraged. I imagine them opening the pages of my book and meeting me as a 10 year old in Shanghai without actually having left their own homes in Sydney, Tokyo, London, Hong Kong, or Los Angeles. And I shall welcome each and every one of them with a smile and say, how splendid of you to join me. Come in and let me share with you my story because I understand only too well the wrinkling in your heart and what you are going through. So her goal in writing this nonfiction piece, remember we think about author's purpose, is to share her life story, but also to connect with other people who might feel like unwanted children. And the contents of her book are pretty cool. If you can see this, it has the titles of the chapters, chapter numbers, it's in English and also in characters, which is cool. Um, and then she has an author's note, and she talks here about her use of characters throughout the book. She says, Chinese is a pictorial language. Each word is a different picture and has to be memorized separately. There is no alphabet and no connection between the written and spoken language. A person can learn to read and write Chinese without knowing how to speak one word. Because each word is a pictograph, Chinese calligraphy evokes a greater emotional response than the same word lettered in alphabet. The art of calligraphy is highly revered in China. Poetry written in calligraphy by ancient masters is prized and passed on from generation to generation. Through Chinese Cinderella, I hope not only to intrigue you with the plight of a little girl growing up in China, but also to interest you in her language, history, and culture. Um, and then she has a preface introducing her book. Chinese Cinderella is the true story of my childhood up to the age of 14. It was difficult and painful to write, but I felt compelled to do so. My family considered me bad luck because my mother died giving birth to me. They discriminated against me and made me feel unwanted all my life. Though mine is a simple personal tale of the journey of one unloved little Chinese girl growing up in Shanghai and Hong Kong, please do not underestimate the power of such stories. In one way or another, every one of us has been shaped by the stories we have read and absorbed in the past. All stories, including fairy tales, present elemental truths which can sometimes permeate your inner life and become part of you. The fact that this story is true may hold special appeal. Today the world is very different from the place it was when I was a child. Though many Chinese parents still prefer sons, daughters are not so much despised. But the essential things have not changed. It is still important to be truthful and loyal, to do the best you can to make the most of your talents, and to be happy with the simple things in life. To believe that deep down, 
you will someday ultimately triumph if you try hard enough to prove your worth. For those who were neglected and unloved as children, I have a particular message. In spite of what your abusers would have had you believe, please be convinced that each of you has within you something precious and unique. Chinese Cinderella is dedicated to you with the fervent wish that you will persist in trying to do your best in the face of hopelessness. To have faith in the end, your spirit will prevail. To transcend your abuse and transform it into a source of courage, creativity, and compassion. Although Chinese Cinderella was written when I was in my late 50s, inside I am still the same little five-year-old yearning for the love of my parents. Mother Teresa once said, Loneliness and the feeling of being unwanted are the greatest poverty. To this I will add, <clears throat> Please believe that one single positive dream is more important than a thousand negative realities. And that's the big theme that I hope you take away from this book. So as we read this story, I want you to consider how one single positive dream could be more important than a thousand negative realities. And especially given our current climate and what's going on in the world right now, I think this is a good lesson on optimism and possibility. Um, and so be ready to share the ideas that you have with regards to that theme as we read. Okay, so some of the introductory information that she provides in the novel helps you get a feel for her family before we begin. So she has a section on names. And tells us that in Chinese families, a child is called by many names. My father's surname is Yen. My siblings and I inherited his surname. The surname is a last name uh, in English. Chinese surnames come in the beginning of a person's name. Second, at birth a baby is given a name by his or her parents. My given name is Junling. Most people would call that a first name or a given name. Since my surname comes first, my Chinese name is Yen Junling. Third, at home, a child is called by a name dependent on the order of his or her birth. So this is important because as you read the story and listen to the story, uh, they'll alternate between the siblings' names and what they called them in terms of birth order, like older brother, second brother, um, fourth younger brother, that kind of a thing. So I would encourage you to take a minute, maybe pause the video here, and look through the names of her family, um, especially number eight, where she lists all of her siblings. So she talks a little bit about numbers. Each chapter in Chinese Cinderella begins with a number, both in English and in Chinese symbols. If this is something that you are familiar with, and then you'll probably be able to read it both ways. If it's something you're not familiar with, this is a good kind of introductory lesson. So feel free to pause it here and read her information on numbers. Then these are a few historical notes um, based on the information that she provides in the back matter of the book. Um, in 1842, before she was born, China lost the Opium War, and she talks about how Britain took over Hong Kong and Kowloon, and then for the next hundred-ish years, China suffered defeats by Britain, France, Japan, a number of countries, and many port cities like Tianjin and Shanghai fell under foreign control. Those are two of the cities that she lives in at some point, and so it's important for you to know that they weren't necessarily controlled by China, although they were in China. In 1911, there was a revolution. The Imperial Manchu Court in Beijing was abolished. Sun Yat-sen became president. 
proclaimed China a republic, and Chiang Kai-shek, military general, took over after Sun's death in 1925. So there was a lot of uh, political unrest, a lot of changes going on. This is still before she was born. Then in July 1937, Japan declared war on China, and Japan moved in and occupied Beijing and Tianjin. Our author was born in November 1937 in Tianjin. Specifically, she lived in a French concession that was ruled by French citizens according to French law. She went to a school where they spoke French, um, and then outside the concessions, the Japanese were in charge, even though she's living in China. So keep in mind, there's a lot going on here, right? Then uh, you probably have heard this one in 1941, specifically December 7th, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor and declared war on the U.S. and Britain on the same day. Japanese troops marched into Tianjin's foreign concessions, which is where she was living. The concession is a part of the city owned by a foreign power. So this was a dangerous time for her. 